Thanks for joining us for another episode of So What's Next. I'm your host, Jeremy Medor. And I'm your co-host, Kristen Smith. And today we are sitting with... Justin Smith with Collective Premium Cannabis. And Dave Gianetta uh, with Collective as well. Wonderful. Dave, what is your position at Collective? Uh, so I'm a CEO, and um, what that entails is a lot of stuff behind the scenes. Oh, so yeah, so, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Um, not on the floor a ton, but, uh, you know, from time to time I'm out there. But uh, a lot of compliance, you know, background compliance, making sure that we're, you know, doing everything, uh, you know, with uh, compliance with the Triple uh, C, the Cannabis Control Commission. Yep. Um, you know, permitting, anything directly with the town managers, uh, a lot of that type of stuff behind the scenes. I imagine there's a lot more than people could even begin to wrap their heads around. Yeah. Yeah. There's never a, a day that I'm like, oh, what should I do today? You okay. know, it's a, there's plenty out there. Um, I'll dabble a little with, with inventory from the standpoint of just watching the menu a little bit, just from, from my perspective. And if there's any suggestions I can add, I will, sure. um, you know, I just kind of all things just overseeing all of it really. All right. Yeah. Fantastic. And Justin. Uh, yeah. So I'm focused on purchasing strategic partnerships. Um, so day to day dealing with vendors, uh, keeping our menu straight, keeping our pricing straight. Uh, and then it's an ever changing industry. So it's, it's, it's always a challenge to keep products on the shelves people moving in the right direction. Yep. Um, so. And so you're, I know that you guys have recently acquired other, other locations. Mm -hmm. Are you also integral in that, in that transition as well? Yes. Right. Yep. So, you know, upon uh, acquiring campfire, we, you know, also inherit some uh, stock from them while doing so. It's just mm -hmm. part of the transaction. That's a tricky thing to maneuver. Uh, so we kind of worked with the previous owners to, unravel some things we wanted to see go away and keep some things we wanted to see stay. Okay. Uh, and then we're in the process right now of just integrating new products. So, you know, it's, it's, it's about new products, but then also kind of finding our stride with the existing team. You know, yep. we're trying to work with the people that were working there already, yeah. uh, kind of see who fits and, and see how that goes. So yep. it takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. Um, you got to address sell through kind of, see what you're putting product into because sure. our systems are different than the, their systems. Of course. So yeah. it's good. You know, so we're about, you know, three weeks in here. Everything's going well. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> and just, just to clarify. So campfire, yeah. as Justin mentioned, I was this, just going to dive into Yeah. It's that. campfire, yeah, campfire cannabis. Yeah. Uh, they are an existing operation, existing dispensary, retail dispensary, uh, 65 West Boylston street in West Boylston. And, um, you know, it, what we saw it as was a, a great operation that we felt could use some improvement mm -hmm. and with some of our models that we apply at Collective. Um, and, you know, we've, we've applied a lot of those changes right away, you know, right, right out of the gate, going through the interior, uh, just making some, some simple changes. You know, they had like plexiglass dividers that were geared toward COVID. COVID yeah. And we just felt like, you know what, that doesn't give the customer that warm experience it that they doesn't. have with us in Littleton and in Bill Ricca at separated. our other yeah. yeah, at our other two locations. We like to work with our customers like it's a conversation, sure. right? This yep. isn't like a get in, get out. Yep. Um, you know, if they wanna do that, they can do that. Sure. But if they wanna have that that consult, if you will, we're willing to sit there with them as long as they need and, yep. and give them as much information as they need to make the right purchase for right. them. So, um, yeah, so Campfire Cannabis is, is one that we acquired. Uh, they opened late 2020, so yep. kind of like right in the heart of COVID. Okay. Um, and single store operation, so they felt like, you know, they made a good investment. Um, they made their investment turn. They were able to, to sell it to someone else like ourselves, looking to expand our footprint, um, having two already. 
you know, with, with Justin too, it gives us buying power. So now we're up to three stores. So when he, he works with vendors, it gives us a little more leverage, oh, right. Yeah. Uh, you know, to be able to buy more products mm-hmm. and get our prices down. For sure. So for sure. There's strength there. in numbers. Yeah, absolutely. So you're three locations Yep. and those locations are in. So Littleton yep. at 537 Great Road in Littleton, yep. right off 119, right off 495, a minute off 495. Uh, Bill Ricca, we call it our flagship store because it is the the busiest of the of the three. Was that your original? Uh, they there really is no original okay. because Bill Ricca and Little Littleton we opened them both in the same weekend. Oh wow! Okay, wow. so it was it was We're pretty more intense. On that in a little bit. <laughs> we, we, we can definitely talk more to that. Um, March fifth and March sixth of twenty twenty two, respectively. Okay, we opened both of those stores, yep. so we staffed up. We were ready to go. Yeah. Um, so wow. Bill Ricca, we we call it our flagship. That is also right off the highway, right off Route 3, mm-hmm. um, off, if anybody knows Treble Cove, if yep. anybody knows the prison, yep. we actually abut the prison. Our oh. lot line abuts the prison. Okay. So that's, you know, always a fun thing to say. Right. But uh, <laughs> um, so, so yeah, that's uh, number four, Republic Road in Bill Ricca. And then, as I mentioned, 65 West Boylston Street in West Boylston is uh, Campfire Cannabis. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. That's wonderful. So, yeah. and, and that's only three weeks old. Uh, yeah, for, for us. You guys, for you yeah, guys. exactly. Yeah. And then you said it came out in late late 2020. Yep, they opened late 2020. We closed on our acquisition on yep. August 1st. Yep. So, um, do you want to speak a little bit about? Uh, so, Justin, you talked about sundowning some of the products that they were offering. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I'm I'm going to venture a guess that you had already done some market research as to why they should be sundowned, and not just because well we didn't like them. Um, <laughs> yeah, and and you know the thing that's important about this industry to note is that everybody's got different plans yep. and it's new. So even just the simple act of products staying on shelves is not about ordering. Sometimes it's about production issues. So you know I compare it to liquor. You know nobody wakes up at a liquor store these days and you know, wonders if Grey Goose and Kettle One will be coming this week or if they need to source a different vodka to Uh get them through the demand, let's say. Uh Um, So any product that we remove from the menu isn't because it's a poor product, let's say. You know, I'm not going to say anything in that direction. It's more that we've established partnerships that work, pricing that works, and sales techniques with some people. So as the market evolves, it's also sort of narrowing, and I would say you know, the the real committed people are starting to shine and the, the, the people that are less committed are Understood. Falling, falling away as yep. they should. No, that, that makes perfect sense. Uh, typical uh, of uh, capitalism, right? Mm-hmm. And yep. so, you know, the strongest will survive and yep. you guys are, are identifying which ones are, in fact, the main players. Yep. And you're going to try to um, not necessarily limit your products, but uh, gear your product line toward the ones that support you best. Yep. Uh, and consistency and uptime is a huge part of that because inventory management, I can imagine, is probably unpredictable. Yeah, well, production can, there can be issues and yep. it is a living plant. So there are things, you know, the worst thing that can happen is you lose a whole crop. Yeah. So if you're in a flow as a grow, uh, and we are not by choice for th- some of these reasons, you know, we entered the industry later. Uh, in the beginning, it was very hard to get uh, product. And w- We'll throw out the term MSO. It's a term that you should know. It's a multi-state operator. So in the beginning, there was a lot of big money kind of flooding the licensing scene to, mm-hmm. to win this business, right? right. Yeah. And their main goal is to be a vertical operator. So growing their own stuff, making their own products, and ideally flooding their stores with that. Okay. Um, it's our opinion that that isn't really how cannabis should be viewed or sold. Okay. I don't think it's that type of a commodity. What's it's the- more of a local farmer type yep. commodity, you know, so it's a living plant. So it's got all these things that can happen to it. Yep. Uh, and, and I think that it's just, you know, like I said, we're, we're kind of weeding out the who's doing it for the right reasons, who's here to stay, yep. who gets the whole culture, let's say. Right. So that's been a process in itself over the last five years, you know, and, and we really came in at a point where the market was starting to shift and there was more small time growers. There was more of an ability to somebody like us who's a retail only operation okay. can focus theoretically a hundred percent of their menu on anything we want. Whereas a corporate weed company has obligations to this sort of 
row that they've created. So they, they're not interested in taking on other things until they take care of themselves. Got you it. Know, and so you guys have never grown? No. No. It's always been a... You source from independent providers primarily? Yeah, exactly. In, yep. the, in the state. Yep. Do you have yep. any exclusivity agreements? Awesome. No. So that keeps it that, that keeps it fair market for yeah. the most yeah. part. Yeah. We, in the beginning, you know, we we thought we needed to go that way because supply wasn't as available. It was still young. Okay. Uh, it's still young, but it was yeah. much younger, and yeah. there weren't as many um, cultivators or manufacturers that were licensed and ready for operation. There was there was a handful, right? So. We thought at that time we needed to, but it didn't end up happening where we, we needed these exclusivity agreements. Yeah. And um, in hindsight, it's a good thing we didn't because if you look at our menu uh, or menus, it's very, a lot of variety, uh, a lot of variety. We work with 35, 40 different vendors. Okay. Um, so we're not, wow. yeah, we're very loyal to all of them, yep. but to the you know to the 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 right amount that we need or yep. the right percentage on our menu that we actually need sure. of the products that they offer, mm -hmm. you know you, you're not going to have one cultivator who offers the exact same strains as the other. So you can create that I was variety. Ask, okay, so yeah, th is there's not a lot of crossover in between? Are they are they fairly niche into themselves? Uh, I I would say there's some that are similar, but yeah. I'll let you speak well, to that as far as strains go, I mean that's always a loaded topic. Like flavors and strains, I think are they they're created in a sense. Uh, and the old market was sort of what's known as like a land race strain or like a classic singular strain of cannabis. Mm -hmm. Now everybody's crossing everything. Right. So everything is kind of rebred with each other, renamed. So it's a little yep. confusing on the lineage, no matter okay. what it is, but it's also kind of exciting because okay. people are now starting to like openly have fun with it as opposed to like, you know, here's your bag of weed and get out of here. Yeah. You know, that's yeah, what it always I was, was, you know? I was going to ask that as the industry was so young, do you find the more years that you're putting on, like you're getting this new group of people that are like, Oh yeah. Hey, I talked to so-and-so and yeah, but they're still not completely educated. Like, is that something you guys help with? Yeah. We're getting a lot of new people to the cannabis industry. Um, we're also seeing a lot of shifts from alcohol use to, uh, um, cannabis use. Yep maybe in the forms initially in, say, edibles or yeah. the drinks, because it's a way that you can still remain social, especially yeah. the drinks. You can mm -hmm. have a drink in your hand at mm -hmm. a social event yep. and be perceived to be kind of like doing everything that everybody else is doing with alcohol. Yeah. And But you're not going to have the same effects. You're not going to have that hangover mm -hmm. Negative yeah. effects, I should say, of, yeah. of, that alcohol will will give you. So, we are seeing that it's a it's still a growing industry. It's a growing market, even remotely at our own locations. We're we're finding the same. That's yeah. interesting. Okay, so you guys also offer liquid form beverages. Yes. Okay. Yeah, a number of uh, a wide variety of of just that and okay. additives to liquid beverages. Yeah. So you know, sticks with powder that you could add oh. to anything okay. or uh, syrups. So what would almost present like a cough syrup type yeah. substance, but you know, is like a tincture. So yep. it's mm -hmm. concentrated THC and different volumes. Yep. Uh, you could put it directly on your tongue. You can mix in a drink. Yep. A lot of these things are becoming flavorless, mm -hmm. true flavorless. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you can add to water and you can't taste it. Then it's pretty flavorless, wow. you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And that could be interesting, you know, yeah. cause mm. the beverage market is going to be somewhat, I think in our opinion, hindered by, legal reasons when you can get a I THC would, seltzer yeah. at Fenway Park then different story you know sure. but we're not there yet so sure. um, fair enough fair enough yeah now are these beverages also offered in classic establishments of, of bars and pubs and restaurants or no. is this strictly through no because it's regulated and and it's not um, it's not regulated through the FDA got it so and it you'll any package you read that contains cannabis it will say right on there and that's that's a mandatory regulation yep. to put right on there that this isn't regulated by the FDA so that got they it. take they take no ownership. Interesting. Um, so to answer your question, no, you, you won't see that in like public establishments yet. But like yeah, just what do you insane. see happening there? Do you see it eventually becoming an FDA regulated substance or is this going to remain? Yeah, uh, I mean, the, you, you said CCC, you, right? Yeah, yeah, Cannabis Control Commission. Yeah. That's only the state regulatory um, 
uh, group right. as for the state. Is there a federal equivalent for that? There really isn't because it's just not regulated right now okay. federally. Being illegal would be the equivalent right yeah. now. What's that? Being illegal. Being illegal. Is, <laughs> it's, not, it's not an equivalent. It's the reason yeah. why it's not. Right. So sure. you'll see it happen on a local level first. So like mass will push for the ability of people to do a social consumption lounge. Sure. You could even argue that this is happening now um, where in Cambridge, for example, they're superseding the state guidelines and saying that we've created a, a a lounge license of which you can do anything. Okay, like so a town that, ordinance kind of so thing. So like anything, people then push and say, all right, well, theoretically, I own this lounge. It's private. You've given me a VIP license or a club license. Mm -hmm. So they're now holding parties and you can smoke weed there. Yeah. So that's where it starts. People okay. start doing it. And that's already it. happening? Yeah, in okay. Cambridge specifically. Okay. Um, there's a lot of clubs that are it, they're private licenses. So it is a license of sorts and it's not statewide. But okay. I think what you'll see is you'll see... Um, the state free up these consumption licenses, and okay. there's a pilot model in place right now in like six different municipalities to do this, yep. to see how it works over time. So I would say within the next couple of years, it should be coming around. Okay. So so, so then I, I would expect that by trans, by definition, you guys, your facilities don't allow for on-site consumption to occur. Correct. So it's yeah. a purchase and walk kind yes, of thing. Yes, okay. exactly. All right. Um, and more to the point of uh, federal regulation, there you may have heard there's some rescheduling discussion of what what class um, marijuana would fall within. So they're trying to take it uh, out of like the same class as something like cocaine or heroin yep. other and opioids, yeah. other opioids and move it to a class three which would uh, ultimately start to lift other types of federal regulations. Okay. Um, so that kind of heads toward legalization. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we, we keep an eye on that. Nothing's changed yet. Yep. Um, it's interesting but, to see the evolution of that. Yeah. Um, and especially over the short period of time that it's been permissible. Yes. Um, and like anything else in our world, you give somebody... You give somebody an idea, and then they take that idea to the next step logically, right. right? Yeah. Um, and even sometimes the illogical next step, right? Like sure. that happens too. Um, but that's interesting. Yeah. Really awesome. So you had indicated that you had opened up in March of 22. Yes. What got you into And, and were you both at, at opening? Or yeah. Were, so we've been together in the since the beginning. Okay. You know, really, you know. Justin's credit, it was his idea. Okay. Uh, he threw it out there. And opportunity. You know, <laughs> opportunity. We we both Let's live in this. we both live in Littleton. Okay. Um, Littleton started to discuss the idea of passing uh, a bylaw that allowed for retail sale of marijuana. Yep. And so we just started investigating. What does that look like? Right. Sure. And uh, you know, we looked at the permitting with that. We're both um, somewhat versed in in obtaining permits we have both have real estate and construction backgrounds fantastic so, so we've been in front intro. of the planning board yep. we've been in front of the select board sure. yeah, you know yep. times helps. before which which i'm sure were, were really it was, advantageous it it was Feathers because you, you cap, kind so speak, yeah, yeah and you kind of know number one you know some of the players mm -hmm. um that didn't necessarily help us <laughs> okay <laughs> i'll put that right out there it's uh, politics it, it was still a major <laughs> no, yeah. no way it, always is. Yeah. it was still a major challenge you yeah. know despite that um sure. but we knew the process or processes where we could come prepared okay. and and be very ready to answer any questions. We understood the the permitting process of submitting an application and what that really looks like. What should it look like? It's not on a napkin, sure. you know what I mean. And yeah. and we took it very seriously and we stood out beyond others okay. uh, to the point where they were willing. At, at least in Littleton, they were willing to sign. Uh, it's called a host community agreement. HCA is just the term for it. Uh, so we signed an agreement with them um, somewhat simultaneous during that same process. This started late 2018 for us, oh, early wow. 2019, okay. uh, where we started going to meetings. But then simultaneously, we saw Bill Ricca uh, had some of the same processes happening. Uh, I'm from Bedford originally, Bedford, mm -hmm. Mass. And so I'm very familiar with Bill Ricca. It, it felt like you know, close enough backyard. To, to me, backyard yep. used to hang out there, yeah. you know, yeah, I you still, know people, I know people, uh, once again, that didn't help us. Um, <laughs> 
but uh, customers, customers. yeah, but it, it, I think it, it helps it, us now that we're in business. Yeah, to be does. from the area, yeah, it does. I bet it does. Yeah. It does. Yeah, we are local business. We are truly yeah. local. We really are. Yeah, and, and, and you're liked and known uh, and trusted. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely, that helps. And that did help. I would say from the the perspective of the town officials, say in Bill Ricca, mm-hmm. where they were like, oh, all right, you know, he's from Bill, he's yeah. from Bedford, yeah. like eh, you know, right there. He's not coming from Maine. He's not coming sure. from New York, you know, yeah, New York like, yeah. or California or yep. Colorado, you know. Yep. So it was local enough for them. Um, but yeah, so long story short, the it, this we did not predict to happen. But what happened was as we so Littleton, as you know, is an existing building that we rehabbed. So we we did an interior fit out. Uh, we cleaned up the outside as well. Bill Ricca, we built from ground up. Okay. So we bought the land. Structure built. Correct. Okay. Oh, we I bought bought vacant piece of land okay. that was like an old. Right next just to like, the prison. Yep, right next <laughs> to the prison <laughs> in an Moving industrial in. park. Yeah. And uh, it's right across from a big mobile station mm-hmm. with a drive through Dunkin' I Donuts. Exactly where you are. Yeah, it's yeah. a great spot, right? Yeah. So we built that building ground up. You could never have predicted that the two locations, permitting wise, would land. Uh, at the same time Especially as, as with one a build. Of, yeah, one's That's a build, a, one's yeah. a new build, one's yeah. not. And Littleton kind of fell behind, but the fact that it, uh, uh, permitting wise, but then the fact that it was only a, a, a fit out, mm-hmm. we blew through that in about three and a half months. We okay. fit that out oh. in three and a half sure. months. That helped us because, again, construction background, that's where we do know some of the people yep. mm-hmm. and we can get things done quicker. Yep. Yep. So we did. Yep. And uh, then the Cannabis Control Commission comes in. Once you're all fit out and they do, uh, it's called a PFLI, a, a uh, post final license inspection. Mm-hmm. And so they did, you know, the inspections one after the next. And we were still during COVID enough where they would do them virtually. Mm-hmm. So we'd be walking around with our phones <laughs> on a Zoom call or a this, Teams this call. This was late 21 at that this point? This was late 21. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, um, but what was great about it, it, it was super efficient. We had one investigator from the CCC. She allowed us to piggyback one inspection off the next. Okay. So that's when we just got both final licenses at the same time. So right. we said, all right, it's go time. We have to staff up. <laughs> Looks like it's happening. It's happening. Yeah. We staffed up pretty quickly. We got, uh, we had about, uh, in the ballpark of about 50 employees in short order. Wow. Between the two? Between the two. Wow. Um, very quickly, yeah. we, we got that put together, a big interviewing process. I mean, we were still mid-construction and we were doing interviews, you know, on picnic tables and, oh you goodness. know, fold-out chairs. It was, you know, it was what we needed to do to get yeah, ready. absolutely. Um, you know, we brought in minimal product to, to, to be able to pass our inspections. We got inspected, passed, and then it was a waiting game, unfortunately. But then they gave us the commence operation um, go-ahead the same time. Yeah. So we were like, well, why wouldn't we take advantage of this? Yeah. yeah. So we did a soft opening um, in Bill Ricca. We opened up at four o'clock on a Saturday mm-hmm. and we just, gra- you know, hit, hit the ground running, yeah. you know, grassroots marketing, just trying to get the word out to yeah. as many people as possible. Yep. From 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. on a Saturday, we had a, a little over 100 people come through, okay. which felt like hours, a success. Yeah. That is successful. You know, yeah. and we... Because of Bill Ricca's visibility to the street in yeah. such a busy area, yeah. we did have people coming in during construction anyway, asking like, hey, mm-hmm. you guys open yet? <laughs> yeah. and, you know, that worked to our benefit. Yep. And then uh, we put the blasts out there as quickly as we could. We had 72 hours to do it. Oh my goodness. Because they give you the commence ops and then they say, okay, in you, you, can, do, you can open within 72 hours. So we did. Yeah. We were like, we gotta take advantage. So we did that on a Saturday, and then on a Sunday we opened up um, Littleton, just right open, you know, at 9 a.m. that next morning. Yep. And then we threw a little, you know, event at Littleton to, to build that one up, and then it was just hit the ground running. And you know, and it's been from there. It's just been for this guy. For this guy. All so right. yeah. Okay. Who handles HR? Um, so we have uh, we have an internal uh, director of operations and personnel. Yep. He he is kind of like the liaison to HR. Okay. So if you have an issue of any kind, or if you you know onboarding a new um, a new employee, uh, his name's Dan. Dan will do that for us. Okay. Now we do have a third party HR company yep. who will handle any issues that that would go beyond 
Well, knock on wood, we've never had uh, is, is that a business the need. decision or a state, state requirement? How, how does that work for that? It's a business decision. It's not a state okay. requirement, yep. um, but you know, it's a protection method, right? Yep. And we feel they specialize in HR, sure. right? We specialize, we feel like we specialize in, in knowing people yep. and being able to, to talk with people as like the first stop. Yep. But if we can't help you, then absolutely our employees have an avenue where they can speak to somebody in HR, yep. um, you know, or if, if there's like, you know, time card issues or questions, they can go to HR if right. they need to. Yeah. But we don't use the service all that much. We really use them for payroll, processing payroll. Yep. That's it. Makes sense. Makes now, sense. Are, are there a lot of things that your employees need to kind of sign off on or like training? Mm -hmm. I'm sure with this industry, like the advice they're giving people, yeah. like there has to be some level of yep. how yeah. that all works. Yeah. So there's, there's a required training um, that they have to do okay. within 90 days of them being hired. Yep. Okay. And um, so we, we actually enforce that before they start with us, mm -hmm. uh, before they start communicating with any customers, just because we, we just want to be covered. Yeah, I yep. can imagine that's Out a huge. Yeah, yep. Yep. exactly. So it teaches them the basics of, you know, handling cannabis, um, you know, what they can. We're recreational. We're not medicinal. Right. So we can't truly recommend and say this product right here will work for you and this is what it will do for you. Right. We can't do we that. We can say try this. This we, is fun. Whatever. We say, you know, a lot of our customers have tried this right. and it has worked for this. Right. That allows them to say, okay, I'll make that decision for yeah, myself. Your mileage may vary. You got it. Big now, disclaimers. Is that different, like your facility than others? Like are some medicinal? Yeah. And yes. okay, so you're, you're just recreational. Yes. And it comes down to licensing. Okay. So, and certain uh, requirements. So yeah. in under a medical license, you do have to have a physician on file. Oh. Who, yeah, who okay. who will basically support a that lot of your sense. recommendations? That makes sense. Yep, um, dosing is different too f with the products. You can dose higher with, with a medical one. license yeah. okay. than you can recreational. Got it. Um, so uh, for you know purpose of edibles, let's say each serving can only be five milligrams okay. with the recreational market. Yep. Um, whereas it can go what upwards of 50, I believe. Wow. Um, yeah. So, right. but <laughs> it's, like, for, it's, it's for a different purpose, right? It's yeah. very, you yeah. know, set. for sure. For sure. And medical is kind of like the early day move, both for companies coming into States as well as let's say governments trying to responsibly bring mm -hmm. cannabis in. Mm -hmm. What's kind of happened now is that there are still medical operators. Um, one of the things they're required to have everything on the medical menu that they do on the rec so that the patients have first access. Got it. But what's really happening is the prices have come down so much that the uh, incentive for having a medical card and, and it's reduced. publicly having one, I guess, and the tax savings is almost canceled out yeah. by oh. a menu like ours. That's interesting, huh? Yeah, yeah. so what's wow. good because it kind of like from a medical standpoint, it's about the product. So it should sure. be restricted to who has this and where can I go? You should be able to get it anywhere and truthfully at the best price, right? Yep. So that's just one thing that's kind of evolved. Medicals, mm. you know, a lot of medical operators might tell you, don't bother. Mm. You know, it's kind of a, like I said, a, a, an old move in the industry. Mm. It's kind of just evolving to be more accepted. So mm. it's somewhat unnecessary, um, but there's still plenty of people that have the card for specific things that cannabis helps with and that's mm -hmm. proven. And I think touching on something we talked about earlier, that's part of the exciting thing about this is we're all learning. So mm -hmm. though we try to educate based on what we're learning, it also is a very individual sport. Right. You know, everybody yeah. is yeah. different in their Everybody's intake, their reactions. Yeah. So you really need to find your own path. And I think that it's going to be cool. I think over time we're going to see that other elements to plant our appetite suppressants or do cure diseases or whatever they help with, yep. I think it's going to be a natural assistance. That's okay. what's cool about this is that it's, it was already here on the planet. We're just finding ways to deal yeah. with it. And most yeah. of those things are beneficial that already exists. Sure. So it's the beginning of the journey, you know, for everybody. I think it's the cool part is what's around the corner. Exactly. Yeah, it seems like a lot of people, like the stigma is kind of going down. It is. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're not like, yeah. It, it's it's definitely more of a conversational thing now. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like everyone's talking about it. I was just saying to Justin on the way here. Um, so our two of our three kids uh, play hockey. Yep. And so we're in a rink all the time. Yeah. Uh, last night, you know, sometimes I don't even 
notice, but I, I threw on a hat. It's a collective hat. Yep. And uh, one of the parents right next to me is like staring at it. He's like, you uh, you work there? Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, you one of those things that's like an you, underground. You, you, you can like, tell like, he got all like quiet with me. You are, you know, and I was like, yeah, yeah. are we in an alleyway all the time? <laughs> <laughs> you got the stuff. So, 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 I, so I answered his question naturally with a question, and I was like, why you go there? <laughs> and he's like, well, you know, I live in New Hampshire, so I go here, and I'm like, well, you got to check us out, you know. Yeah. We got into the conversation, yeah. and you know, he's not like a big stoner or anything, yeah. but he, yeah, it's like that stigma thing. He doesn't drink. And this is his outlet. You know, he said to me, he's like, it's Friday. It's the end of the week. I, you know, I had a, an awful week. I, I want to, yeah. you know, take an edible. I want to do whatever, yeah. you know. So it's, it's a conversation piece for yep. sure. And, and yes, that stigma is, is dropping quite a bit. Yep. Um, and I'll even admit, you know, in the beginning, um, you know, we didn't want to put cannabis on any of our marketing. Sure. Um, our tagline is calm, cool, collective. Right. Right. Instead of collected. Yeah. Um, we put this on a lot of things because it, it just it would still stir up a conversation, right. but yeah. it didn't have to be right out there. It's a now, lot more socially acceptable. It is. Yeah. And I, I like I'm in a rink uh, with with kids yeah. and, and just because I have it on my hat. Would you wear a Coors Light shirt? Sure. Yeah. Right. You're yeah. not. That doesn't mean you're going to give a, a minor a beer. Right. No, right. So no. it's it's yeah, we're getting through the stigma. It's getting better for sure. Good. I, I'd love to flash back, you know, back to prohibition days yeah. Yeah. and see what post prohibition yeah. behavior and That's attitude right. was yeah. like. Because I, I would I would venture to guess that it's not too different. It, Justin mm -hmm. uses the analogy of prohibition yeah. all the time. Yeah. All the time. He'll be like, you know, it's like the prohibition days. Like we are in that yeah. prohibition period or just post prohibition. Right. So are any of yeah. your like three you locations said. a speakeasy? Um, <laughs> Littleton is kinda, right? You guys have been there. Littleton's pretty I personally have not, but I've oh, okay. seen I've seen the material so, that we developed. So Littleton's pretty cool because it's in an industrial park. Yeah. Um, although it's right off 495, it is tucked away. Yep. So you have to go down like a common industrial drive. Mm -hmm. Then you turn into our parking lot. So we're like about 700 feet off the main road. Mm -hmm. Then once you get there, you have the ability to park in such a way that you're kind of hidden. Sure. You walk in um, at grade, but then you go down an ADA yeah. ramp yep. that is somewhat below grade. So then you start to hit that speakeasy feel, right? So you're yeah. like in here and it's, you know, uh, still 10 foot four uh, ceilings, but still feels like low yeah, enough it does, where yeah. it's, it feels like a speakeasy, yeah. right? Whereas Littleton, I'm sorry, Bill Ricca has 18 foot high ceilings. You right. walk in at grade, you stay at grade. Sure. Yeah. It's big, it's loud, yeah. it's right on the road. Yeah. It's, you know, it's a little less, you know, yeah. hidden. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would say um, Littleton is more of that. Although Campfire can act that way too. Yeah, um, yeah Campfire has a really cool atmosphere. It, it is, you it's know. It's definitely gonna relate to a lot of people, I think. I think so too. So. But yeah, it has that feel where you walk in and you're like, oh, okay, this is what it's all about. Cool. But it definitely doesn't feel, it feels like another retail store, yep. you know, and that's what what we've done um, is try to make it feel like you you don't have to feel like you got to get in and get out. Right. You can browse around. Yep. We have browse, things on shop, display. Yep. Yep. Yeah, Keith and I actually talked about that. Um, I personally don't have any personal, you know, knowledge a lot of knowledge about cannabis. Um, I do now more like as I've talked to Stacy more, <laughs> right. I've yeah. talked right. about it. And, yep. um, it's not what you know, it's who you know. But literally <laughs> I said to Keith when we were um, in Littleton, I was like, I think I need this dime bag because it's like really pretty, <laughs> but I have nothing to put in it. But you guys do an awesome job yeah. at your at your marketing yeah. and at your, um, you know, your clothing. Yeah. I went to, um, Something with the champ, the Neshoba Valley yeah. Chamber, yep. and um, your booth was like awesome. Yeah, like thank you. I still have like a little pouch that has your logo on it, and I think you do. You guys do an awesome job at that. You know, like relating. Like we we actually talked about that a lot in the office. Like you're relating to people that don't even use your product, but yeah. like you're like, oh, I I could use that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like your shirts well, and your. I think that you need to kind of blur the lines between who your shoppers are and who they could be, right? Yeah, like, absolutely. Because the thing about it is. Anybody could be your shopper yeah. long term. Yep. Uh, it's a matter of creating the space, the welcoming space, the education, the marketing, getting people to kind of break down the, the barriers of the questions. Because I, I would suspect that a ton of people have a lot more questions than are being asked. Mm -hmm. And it's more of a question of like, you know, 
what, am I going to find somebody that I know when I go in there and be embarrassed yeah. or, you know, cause there's, yeah, so there, how there's do you that, do that aspect of things. Like, can you guys talk about that? Like how, like if we, if we went in there, mm-hmm. do you run, do you run customer seminars? Do you have um, an educational channel or a series? Or? So what we, what we have been talking about doing is more like a, a consulting type of approach where you as a customer could set an appointment mm-hmm. where one of our staff members will come out on the floor with you. We have an area in in uh, Littleton where, um, you know, there's like seating area. It's yeah. kind of off to the side, yeah. uh, out of the way. Um, where, yeah, you can sit with us and talk with us about anything, right? And yep. we can turn that into an order, right? That makes sense for you. Um, the same approach applies. We're not going to make direct recommendations, but we're going to educate them on what are the known effects of this product sure. versus this product. What is sure. an indica versus a sativa and a hybrid? Yep. You know, talk about all those general knowledge uh, discussions, and then allow them to to make a decision from there on what they want to purchase. Sure. sure. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. So, from a buying perspective, and from a inventory control and management perspective. Um, I imagine that you guys probably get requests yeah. asking for products that you might not have or could source or whatever. Yep. Is there a special order capacity for you guys or is it here's our menu then, and this is where we're at? Um, yeah. So sometimes the request can be generic to a sense where maybe it's a strain that somebody's looking for. So mm-hmm. I guess that would give us flexibility to source it from whoever has that. Yep. Sometimes it's available. Sometimes it isn't. Um, at this point, you know, we've kind of, I would say we almost get like a request for when is something coming back, okay. which sometimes is, you know, it could be because it hasn't entered the store on a reorder yet. It could be production. Yep. There's all these other variables, um, you know, but yeah, we're pretty accommodating. Um, I'd say most of the time we can bring it in if we don't already have it. Or like Dave said, sometimes it's about, you know, we understand that's something you're interested in, but have you seen these other things? Mm -hmm. You know, so there's very much that part of it as well. Um, Generally, are people looking for an effect-driven outcome, or do they like a product because of branding? I I would say, not not unfortunately, but, you know, I'm I'm a heavy consumer of cannabis, so I would consider myself the low percentage that's all about the weed, flavor, like, good grows, all these different things. But 95% of the market is probably more driven by, unfortunately, TAC, which is the total active cannabinoids. So not just THC, what gets you high, but all the other properties of it add to this total. So testing has kind of changed the game a lot because, you know, you never asked what the number was when you were buying pot before it was usually based <laughs> on they probably wouldn't know right no, and <laughs> truthfully, like, truthfully like if it looks good it smells good and it smoked good it's good yeah, if sure. one of those things falls off then it's being masked by one or the other right mm-hmm. that's that's a pretty good general rule of thumb <laughs> so we've kind of had to adapt to despite quality there's also this element of of flavor you know um kind of predictability people like to know it's going to be great that it is a high tack and that's really what's driving the market right now is flavor. And then the effects is probably the other side. Okay. And I would say that's predominantly driven in that category by sleep. A lot of people are, are hearing that cannabis helps sleep. And it's not even just CBD or CBN. CBN is like CBD. It's another component of the plant. So okay. when we have THC is psychoactive, gets you high. CBD also is coming from the plant that is doing all these other things, you know, various things that you've heard for people, yep. pets, all that stuff. Yep. But then there's these other kind of yet to discover pr- properties of it. Some are like CBN is the the melatonin of weed, let's say. Interesting. Um, oh, okay. But you could also argue that, you know, straight THC could put most people to sleep. So you might not need like a heavy sleep driven formula. Uh, and, you know, another example is a family friend of Dave's we were talking uh, to trying to get recommendations and he was you know people say that it's for a back ailment or something mm-hmm. but then you kind of can segue into it and I bet that kind of keeps you not sleeping and they're like yeah totally so now you're kind of recommending sleep driven formulas to alleviate their day okay. and which leads to alleviating their back pain yeah. so it might not be like this will do that but other things about it will 
kind of help your overall life to okay. alleviate some of yeah. those things. No, so yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, just that kind of throwing sense. things out there. It's of, not too different from the you know, multivitamin kind of approach, like yeah. what works and what doesn't and why it doesn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But I mean, your initial question is sourcing requests. Yes. We try to accommodate. Sometimes it takes a minute. You expanded greatly on the initial <laughs> question, but I, I, yeah. I, I, I like the direction that you went in yeah. with it. Because I, I like it too. Yeah. I don't think that... I would have asked a question that was geared toward that kind of response. Well, and we're kind of like indirectly not telling people what they think. We're trying to decipher like, well, this is what they ask. And we we hear a lot of this. So maybe Uh we can just throw this out there. And, you know, I think one of the biggest hurdles we have is getting people in there, you know, because legally it's set up in a way where bud tenders are behind here, products behind here. So it naturally has like a bank feel to it. And what happens when you walk into a bank is somebody's like, can I help you? So you don't have time to be like, well, I didn't get my deposit slipper even look at your clothes and the, and maybe they're already nervous about being there. So it is a very like, yeah. let's get yeah. in and get I out. And that. I would say for that, we also speak to that too. We have a paper menu, which acts for a lot of people as a quick, like, yeah, like I am uncomfortable. Boom, boom. Which is kind of nice to have. So you're not like, if they are going to be uncomfortable and we can't control that, the, all we can do is try to comfort them while they're there. Right. So everybody's different so we have all these different techniques (laughs) of how we present it you know right down to you know if somebody says you know i need a minute give them a minute and just don't harp them don't chase them around the store let them do what they want to do so that's another good example of what justin was saying earlier he used the term mso multi-state operator you know they have a very corporate approach to things where we don't right we're it's us right making the decisions so if somebody does want to see something on the menu and we get enough of those types of requests, we'll make that change. We'll, sure. we'll add mm-hmm. to our menu. Yep. Uh, we don't have a threshold at which we say, no, 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 we just, we can't, we just can't go above that. Mm-hmm. You know, there's no, you know, real hard requirements okay. for us. That's good. Uh, we are the company, right? Yep. We make those decisions. Yep. We make those final decisions. We don't have, you know, somebody to answer to, to make those final decisions. That's on a corporate level. Um, which is fun, right? It, it makes it lively and enjoyable for our staff, for our customers. So yeah, we can definitely add when we get enough of those requests of the same type of product, we'll mm-hmm. say. Mm-hmm. Um, let's uh, switch hats for a little bit and talk business specifically, because mm-hmm. we've been talking a lot about consumer behavior. We've mm-hmm. been talking about uh, general you know, menu, retail offerings, et cetera. But from a business management standpoint, let's let's rewind mm. to 2018. So okay. 2018 to 2022, that's a lot of time yeah. between initial thoughts and actual yeah. uh, activity. Mm-hmm. Um, I think one of my key questions is, how did you guys stay hopeful for four years? Um, <laughs> we, I mean, honestly, yeah. like a, a year in, I'd be like, man, I, I feel so defeated. Like, how did you, it, how did you it, get through that? <laughs> That's just built into us. We're always hopeful. Yeah. We're always determined. Okay. So you can't yeah, change that. You know, I <laughs> yeah. guess going back to our backgrounds, right? You know, other projects, if you're trying to get a project approved, it doesn't typically happen after the first meeting. I hate to say it. That's fair. As much as we wanted it to and expected it to, and it, you know, the, the writing was on the wall for it to happen that way, never happens. Yep. These boards, uh, planning boards, select boards, they like to kind of, you know, drag it out a little bit. Yep. Now, were yeah. you both in real estate? Yeah. Before? Yes. In, yeah. And in, construction. In, okay. Individual from one another, but... So like um, residential or commercial? Mostly or re- mostly residential, okay. a little bit of commercial in there. Okay. But yeah, so... How large were your previous companies? Like, did you have multiple employees like you guys now have? No, neither of us really had employees. Well, you had a couple. Yeah, a couple people on the day-to-day, but mm. it's more of a subcontracting yeah. business. Okay. So um, you went you went from very few, we're just going to call it very few, yeah. Yeah. to... 87. Well, you had to hire we're 50 car- we're at currently the beginning, at yeah, right? Yeah. And yep. <laughs> so how did you go from that to that? Yeah. Like- it was taking the same approach as we did with our subcontractors. So with a subcontractor, let's call it a plumber, yep. right? You're dealing with the owner of the business, right? The, pl- the actual owner of the plumbing business typically is who you're dealing with. Mm-hmm. And then they have their three or four employees. Sure. Okay. But there were plenty of times on a job that you are the, the owner's not there yep. and you need something done and yep. you're going to communicate that to or direct, in a sense, to that um, Employee, associate, okay. yep. right? And um, you do it in a respectful way. You sure. do it in a way that uh, is received well. They'll get it done for you, right? And it, it, it is still a form of 
personnel management, right? And Fair. yeah, so you can parlay that now into these are your employees, right? right. What, what we have found has worked really well is we have a, a number of layers of management. Mm -hmm. So like I'm not going to really direct, uh, let's say, um, somebody who's in inventory, um, who just took in a, a delivery, I'm not going to direct them, mm -hmm. right. right? I'll have a conversation with either our COO or our director of inventory right. about whatever the we'll discussion is. Kind of just, we'll then delegate yeah. from there. Yeah. So, but we have uh, multiple layers of management and those were our initial hires. Okay. So we hired from the top down. Good. And All that right. was the way we saw to make this uh, organization work. Scalable. Yes, Scalable. That's smart. Mm -hmm. And we've built what we call our executive team. Mm -hmm. And it consists of uh, six of us. Okay. And we meet every Tuesday morning. Um, we meet in Littleton uh, around a conference table. Mm -hmm. And we just all catch up because we're all with different departments yeah. and we're all wearing different hats and we're all doing different things. Yep. And we come to the table to share all of those things. What can we do to help one another? Makes sense. So that it's like, okay, all hands in, break. Let's yep. all go and yep. go do what we need to do. Yep. Um, that's how we took on those 50 employees in the beginning. Okay. We hired from the top down. Okay. We, we assigned different departments. So we have found through interviewing for other hires as the, the, the time has gone on, there's a lot of people in management roles who had to manage at a previous location, had to manage the entire store. And when I say the entire store, I mean everything. Right. Too much. Security yeah, yeah. to front of house to back a house, mm -hmm. to everything in between, yeah. ordering, receiving, uh, that's, a lot. that's a burnout. That's a, lot. That's a yeah. burnout yeah. waiting to happen. Yeah. We identified that early uh -huh. and we said, okay, we're going to have a director of security who handles just security. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have a manager of the store mm -hmm. who will handle just the front of house. So your bud tenders, um, your shift supervisors, they manage them, and then inventory. So inventory management will in, it will manage just people who deal with inventory, taking in orders or uh, deliveries, processing them, getting them out to the sales floor. Sure. And so we hired those people individually, and then we 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 gave we empowered them to go ahead and conduct their own interviews, mm. and hire who they feel they want to work with. We're not going to sit here and micromanage that and say, all right you need to hire this person and then you're gonna work with them, right? Mm -hmm. We gave them that opportunity to work with who they felt most comfortable with. Right. Yes, there's been turnover since then. It's just natural, mm -hmm. it's retail. In, especially in at retail. Day, yeah. Yeah. Um, but we've limited that, I, I, I feel. At least our executive core team, they've all been with us since the very beginning. Right. Yeah. So and that's if, if, you're, yeah. if your core group doesn't have doesn't experience the turnover that your that yeah. your uh, front of house group that's might, right yep. um, I, you're still in a good spot yeah so that's how we did it and that's how we felt like we did it in a way that uh, got our feet off the ground yep. and has gotten us to where we are today and you know we we follow those a lot of those same principles is a lot of empowerment and and allowing our manager managers to manage we're not micromanagers right. we're not interested in doing that good so good yeah how old does somebody have to be to work uh in a uh, 21 plus 21 plus yeah and do you find that to be a limiting factor in your hiring process not at all not at all we have uh we have staff who range from say 22 23 to 65 years old so uh but that's also our customer base okay right so they can relate um, a lot of a lot of our uh, employees were once customers, okay. which is really cool. Sure. That is so cool. Sure. Um, I personally manage our info email. So anytime someone goes on our website, there's a form you can fill out if you have any question of any kind. But we do get a lot of inbound inquiries regarding employment opportunities, mm -hmm. and so. I get to see that firsthand, and it's it's pretty cool to see, and it's exciting to see somebody who has the passion and the excitement for our organization before we've even really met them. We've mm -hmm. met them as a customer yeah. in a customer transaction, mm -hmm. but we've never really sat down with them. Sure. But it's it's a it's a great. Uh, we look to those um, future prospective employees yep. 
as they have a leg up already with us. Yeah, they're already ready to sell your product. They're, they, they've got they passion. Yeah. Yeah. They see our operation and yeah. they enjoy it. You know, the best feedback we that I've I've gotten at least uh, is we interviewed somebody for a shift supervisor role, and he came from uh, another organization as a general manager, and but he's a customer of ours, okay. right? Even during the time that he worked there, okay. and you know, I asked him, so what feedback would you give us on our operation from a customer sure. perspective? And he's a he's a GM, yeah, like he's up there, right? He 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 knows how a store should run. Yeah. He's he's like we did things at our store uh, ahead of time that you guys though are doing. Yeah. So it, that was the best validation sure. we could yeah. have ever received. Yeah. That yeah. you know we we were never in cannabis. We didn't know you know or retail right. for that matter. We just did what we thought customers would want to experience because we as customers of other stores experience it that way. Yeah. And it works, so we said, "Well, let's follow that, that model." And we change things, sure. but um, makes sense. But yeah, that's you know, feedback like that is is always great to hear from these people that want to work for us and they're yeah. customers of yeah. ours. Yep, yeah, it's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. What's your favorite part about the job, Justin? The job. Well, I was just going to say <laughs> the career. Real, well, I'll, I'll say this because I tied into what we were saying before. Like, I do love the team we have, yeah. and. You know, I'll speak for myself on this. We came from similar backgrounds running these construction companies. Everything falls on you. Yeah. There isn't really anybody to look to, you, unless it's big enough that you can hire that out, right? I so I think that as, <laughs> as, 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 we're, as we've grown a little older here, you get a little wiser. And I think that what our team enables us to do is focus on what you do best sure. and don't get bogged down by what you're not good at. Absolutely. So we've kind of intentionally oh, selected yeah. <laughs> intentionally selected where we think we can thrive. It's not to say that members of our team can't also do the things that other members are doing, but Certainly. that's not the point. Yep. The point is like stay in your lane, divide and conquer, yep. come back to the table, mm -hmm. keep going. Mm -hmm. You know, and that is my favorite thing about it cuz I you know, we want this to last. This is kind of the rest of our life now. Is how yeah. we're looking at this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we gotta protect it <laughs> and expand it. Um, yeah. So I really do feel that way. That's that's. I wake up every day thankful that we have the team Good. because that's how we get it done. Good. We couldn't get it done by ourselves. That's no, it. So no. You said how many people now? 80, Eighty-seven. Eighty-seven. That's a lot of moving parts. Yeah. And, yeah. and six core. You said. Yeah, six executives. Yeah. So that that would range. Um, Basically, uh, so our general managers of our stores mm -hmm. wouldn't fall into that group. Fair. Um, we we kind of make the decisions, yep. and then we delegate that down to those GMs, yep. and then those GMs delegate down to shift supervisors who are okay. what they sound like for the eight-hour shift that they're on. Yep. They're not there to discipline, mm -hmm. but they are there to help the you know front of house staff. Yeah. Right. Um, if a customer comes in and they've got a concern about something, they can kind of step in and help mm -hmm. with that. Uh, they can override transactions, sure. you know, things of that nature. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they're that first point of contact. So we, we feel confident that we can say to our town officials, we always have somebody that is of a managerial role yep. during every single shift. Yep. So there's someone to answer to, there's some to somebody. Low, there's some mid-level decision-making capacity. Right. That's right. Always present. Exactly. Yep. We don't. Uh, you know, every opening shift opens with a shift supervisor. Yep. Uh, so Stacy, she's our director of marketing, mm -hmm. but she prides herself on learning about what the customers want and and need, and that's how she can kind of help with gearing toward how do we bring these customers in. So in doing so, she's volunteered herself to learn that supervisor role at a time when we are, say, short-staffed. Right. So at this very moment, she's in Littleton mm -hmm. as a shift supervisor, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that's what she's doing. Um, so she floats. She floats, yep. right? And it's great to have that that flexibility. For sure. um, so Stacy, at this moment, is the one, the first point of contact for that shift. Right. Um, but what, what works well with that is she's listening. She's 
understanding what are the customers talking about, right? Yeah. What's the staff talking about? Yeah. That maybe we won't get from, say, another shift supervisor who mm-hmm. isn't a, a part of the executive team, we'll yep. say. Yep. Uh, so it's it's really um, valuable and beneficial to that have her in that yep. role at this moment. Keep your antennas yep. up. But no matter what, because like for one reason or another, we didn't have somebody for today, someone will always step in. Sure. So we will always, we will never allow... Um, you know, the lower level um, role be the the point person. So We're yeah. essentially always open. Yeah. It's, it averages between yeah. 9 and 11 o'clock every day of the week. Okay. Right. So it really is 9 a open. to 11 p. Mm-hmm. Well, the stores vary with their hours, but okay. 9 in the morning to Barrick is the latest at yep. 11. Uh, okay. and the others are a little less yep. uh, based yep. on flow. Yeah. So you have so. a total of 10 hours that you're closed. Yeah. Across yeah. locations. Much. Yeah, well, yeah. People are sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. When they're using it. the product. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Um, all right. So in the spirit of uh, of, of the podcast, okay. so what's next? Like, w- w- what's coming down the pike for you guys? I mean, obviously, you're just settling into yep. your Boylston, um, you know, but what uh, what do you see on the horizon? Well, we, we look to expand even further. Um, you know, we... We have our three locations right now. Um, we don't expect to stop there. And, um, you know, the the way that the regulations are set up in the state, um, someone, some, some one individual can only have control, is how they call it, uh, of, of up to three retail okay. licenses. So, okay. however, there's ways to expand without having that control mm-hmm. um, firsthand. And we would do that um, legally and we would do that uh, compliantly. And But we have ideas of expanding further beyond. Three, it would be yeah. under uh, different ownership. Sure. Um, but the involvement would still be there. We'd step in as more like consultants, yep. uh, things like that. Yep. Um, but that is on the horizon. That okay. is something that we're looking at expanding. It may not be the collective brand, but it's going to be a similar uh, type of operation um, as collective because we've proven that that works. Um, Justin and I actually started a brand um, Ooh, about a year and a half ago, mm-hmm. uh, called 420, F-O-U-R-2-0, 420. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it's, uh, we're, we, we act as somewhat of a, a, a middle person to uh, cultivators and retail, where- um, Relationship makers? Relationship makers, but also product developers. Okay. And those products are in the form, um, majority is in the flower format, where Justin will procure bulk flour. Um, under our retail license, by right, we are able to take in bulk uh, bud flour and then package it into, it's called repackaging, into uh, whether it be like an eighth um, package or pre-rolls, like your joints, um, you know, shake, which is like the pre-ground um, product or taking that, that flour product and grinding it down so that it, you can roll your own joints if that's how you want to do it. But a variety of different formats um, where we then wholesale out to other retailers. And the benefit to that is we're helping a lot of these cultivators who may have excess product that they just don't have the retail presence okay. uh, or the retail demand yep. to sell to. Yep. So they sell to us in bulk format. Right. We take it off their hands. We then turn it around and we have those, those avenues through a lot of relationships that Justin has created. Yep. Um, through collective, but um, so we, we sell that in a number of formats. Yeah, you could compare it to almost like a 90 plus the wine model in the sense that we're taking the time to curate the relationships and the product, sure. gather it up, and then bundle it up in a price point because everybody's all over the place when you're trying to do that. Yep. So we kind of take all the wonder out of it. Okay, um, it's a good opportunity for us. That's good. So I think you see us do more of that, more of that, more of all of it, more so retails, that, more brand building. So, so that segment though for 420 is more of a commercial operation. You're, you're B2B. Yep. Right? Exactly. B2B. And whereas collective is B2C. That's right. Right. Okay. Yep. But exactly. then there's also like 
a blend sometimes of finished goods coming into the collective with yep. bulk being purchased from those same entities. Yep. So it's multi points of business. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. so it's yeah. good. So you guys and, have a bunch of swim lanes, a bunch of hands in the pot, so to speak, yeah. and yeah. you just kind of have a good correlation between your businesses. That's yeah, right. and we think too, like, you know, 420 is a brand and it's something we're trying to expand and make money off of, but what it's also doing to the market is it's supporting people that are hurting or okay. may not survive. Yep. This is the truth. Yep. So the more of that that happens, the more we can kind of, it's not that we hate corporate weed. We just represent the other side. Sure. And I don't That's think fair. weed should be corporatized. So it, it's our own kind of effort of pushing against all that. And okay. look at it as a pie. Who will dominate the pie? We want the local real cannabis producers in the mix okay. more than we want a publicly traded company yep. dictating what happens in a town with fair. weed. I just isn't the way it should be. That's fair. So, all right. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so fair tradeism going on there, yeah. right? Yeah. You got, you got some, uh, politics, so yeah. to speak, right. Yeah. But, uh, but on a cannabis only level. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, and everybody will coexist. It's just the angle we're coming from, fair. you know, fair. and mm-hmm. it's, we don't have a grow. So it's our, in our best interest to source and support the best yep. of the best. It's yep. really just that simple. Yeah. So, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I, this is, all information that's brand new to me. So <laughs> yeah. I, I really yeah. appreciate the uh, the limited, edu- I, I'm sure this is only like tip of the iceberg kind of stuff. Yeah, we've got uh, a lot of information to share. Yeah, yeah no, it's <laughs> very sure. interesting for, sure. for yeah. us. For sure. Um, so you guys have a website, people can, can visit. Yep, yep. collective-cannabis.com. Okay. We'll take you to our two locations, uh, Littleton and Billerica, yep. and then Campfire cannabis.com yep. will take you directly to the, our West Boylston location. We've been asked a number of times, do you plan on calling it collective? I was just going to ask you that. You know, I read your mind. Um, <laughs> I, we, is we, there, we is toyed there a THC with, for that? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, unfortunately not. We toyed with the idea, but we also saw that as, you know, it, it is its own store. It is its own brand. Yep. Um, just it's already be, surviving. It's prior. already surviving. Yeah. And just because Collective now legally owns it yep. doesn't mean they have to brand it. Yeah. And um, I don't know that there's many benefits to shifting it to Collective simply because of geography. Okay. Um, you know, to go from West Boylston to even Littleton, you're talking about a 30 minute drive. Yeah, and there's not a lot of crossover, I'm sure. There, there isn't, but okay. there is more with Littleton and Billerica. Yep. Just because they have been branded together from day one. Sure. Right. Sure. Uh, so that that has already occurred. Um, but Campfire, we look at as spinning off mm-hmm. from that. And, you know, we've talked about maybe a house brand called Campfire, mm-hmm. right, where we do a similar approach as 420, but we do it with Campfire brand mm-hmm. name. Mm-hmm. And we sell Campfire products in Campfire, but then also sell them in collectives. So, right. you know, yes, if you go on Collective's website right now, you're gonna see three drop downs now, whereas it used to be just two. Yep. So you're gonna see Littleton, Bill Ricca, yep. and now you'll see West Boylston. Yep. So you can um, cross market in yep. a sense. You can get there from here. You can get there from here. <laughs> We're making it very well known that um, Collective now is the the ownership for right. Campfire. Okay, so That's there's some transparency. Right out there. There's a lot of transparency. Lots of there. transparency. Yep. Yep. And we will do a grand reopening, is what we're sure. gonna call it. Yep. Yep. Um, but I don't think we're going to try to shift it to be a collective store that says collective premium cannabis mm-hmm. uh, or has the branding colors as collective. Um, we feel like they did a pretty good job, yep. you know, branding yeah. it. So let's stick yeah. with it. If it ain't yeah. broke, don't fix it. Yeah. And the geography there, too, is uh, or the demographics there. You know, it's, there's an RV park right across the street. There's a reservoir. There's uh, yeah. hiking trails. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of things that align with the term campfire. Sure. Um, that we are excited to like rejuvenate the place and, and, and head in that campfire direction right. and, and not necessarily go down the, the collective path. Right, because you're so. switching you're switching gears to the point where it might not make any sense to do so. No. Especially since you guys have the interior decor the way that it is already carved out. Yeah. It would just kind of jump, jump, jump the tracks. I think it actually could hurt us. Yeah, and I think people really like it. Yeah. I yep. think... But if, but if we take the variety of product that Campfire did not have mm-hmm. yep. when we acquired it, and we start to take a lot of the collective variety and start putting it into Campfire, mm-hmm. then it starts to feel more like a collective run operation. Mm-hmm. Uh, we train the existing staff 
who, by the way, we've kept all of them. We had no intentions of letting anybody go because, um, you know, they they were dedicated employees for that location. We just have a different way of doing things. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them are falling into place going, wow, okay, we kind of like this way, you know, okay. and yeah. we like your approach. It is structured. Yep. And uh, there is somebody to, to speak to if I have an issue or what have you. So anyway. Um, more support, more, more systems. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And we're very hands on, you know, we're like Justin said, you know, th that's the excitement, you know, it's, it's exciting for us every morning to wake up and go to work because it's, you know, I always refer to, I'm a golfer. I, I refer to it the back nine, right? It's like 20 years in real estate and construction. We don't see a time period set for how long we'll be in this industry. Yep. We want to do this for the rest of our, our careers, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and see this as a, as a great opportunity and it's, we're having fun with it. Yep. So. That's good. Yeah. Well, good for you guys. Awesome. Um, so on this uh, podcast, we always pull out a card and have oh. you guys answer. And it's essentially what those were. a, yeah. Um, <laughs> Staring at those. Just going to go ahead and, <laughs> oh, sorry about oh, that, yeah. Justin. The only choice. I don't like it. There we yeah, go. if you don't like there it, you can pick another one. If you don't table. like it, you can pick another. <laughs> you, have, uh, you have veto power. <laughs> want another? Uh, no, I like this. You, got, you like this? I'm just trying to. Select what to say. Okay. Right. Okay. Read the question aloud for our audience. You want to go first? Go ahead. I'll go. Uh, <laughs> on what do you want to devote more time? Um, family, kids. Uh, I, I'd like to say I do a good enough job as it is, but um, I'm. It's not so much. I want to devote more time. I'm motivated and interested and excited at the at the time that is in front of us to devote more time to my family, yep. um, kids, wife, yep. and, and just our family of five that, that we do uh, a lot of fun things together. The kids play a lot of sports that we're heavily involved with and, and want to be at every single game and every single practice and yep. um, somewhat segue collective and campfire has allowed for that much more so than um, our previous careers sure because you know no there's no shutting it off but because of these these number systems. of levels and yep. systems yeah. of management yep. that's in place we're able to to go enjoy ourselves for yep. a week at a time and, and, even. and the problems quote unquote that you that do come up that you have to deal with are truly demanding of you and not just generalized problems that yes. you're in the minutia. Yes. Yeah. And um, the stores will operate without us physically there, though just, we don't want to not be there. Yeah. Um, they will operate. And so it is nice now to go away for a week at a time, possibly. And yep. the phone's not really ringing like it used to, sure. uh, you know, with yeah. problems, yep. you know, guys working on the weekends, sure. you know. Uh, water in the basement calls. Those aren't happening anymore. Yep. It's nice. Yep. So on, on what do you want to devote more time? Uh, I'm, I'm motivated to devote more time to family and just family type things because it's, it's awesome. short. It goes by quick. It is. And I, we it were is. always told that yep. when we first started having kids. But How old's your oldest? So uh, we go from 14, almost 14 girl yep. uh, to 10 girl to 8 boy. Right. So, you know, the time's flying. And, uh, you know, so we're... We're, we're, I'm, I'm motivated to, to devote more time to that. Yep. Awesome. All right. Justin? I agree with all that too. <laughs> so, good response. Uh, so what has kept you up at night? Oh, oh, no. oh, oh, I literally oh, say this to him what too. What hasn't? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. I'll just give a generic response there. I mean, we're, we're in it here. We're in it to win it and we're always growing. So naturally what happens is if you're any good at your job, you're, identifying holes and yeah. things that need to be changed. Yeah. And then yeah. when there's, you know, any hiccup we have is usually just a moment in time. It's something that's happening. We quickly find solutions and then mm -hmm. we keep going. So nothing mm -hmm. scares us. No problem's really a problem. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we've had some logistical things moving our products around recently and some changes in storage and solutions that need to be had. Yeah. So that's what keeps me up at sure. night. And then just in general, we're always talking about what's next because... If we're driving, you know, the the business, we need to be looking out for our trends, yep. staying ahead. That's what's got us to where we are. Yep. So naturally, it's like a, it's a good keep you up at night. Yeah. It used to be different. It used I to understand. be, now I've got to go yeah. meet on a custom home and I don't feel like listening to this. 
you know, but <laughs> now it's like, it's about like this feeling of opportunity and trying to get yeah. to it. Yeah. That's, that's what it is, yeah. you know, and yeah. it's a, it's a feeling. good, yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. generic, but no, I, I don't think, think that's, <laughs> I don't think that's generic yeah. personally. Uh, I think that it's very indicative of, um, uh, it, it speaks to the, the progress and the success and the path that you guys are on. Yeah. Um, and it sounds to me like the only pains are the growing ones. Right, mm -hmm. not the ones that are like, oh my goodness, this is falling apart. Yeah. It's more like, oh, this is a new problem. Never yeah. heard of this one before. Never yep. experienced this before. How do we identify and 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 eliminate the problem, or what's the creative solution that we can come up with yeah. that doesn't just take care of this problem, but also maybe takes care of that nagging one over there that we've been ignoring, mm -hmm. right? So the twofers and stuff like that. Yeah, it's climbing up the so, mountain, not falling down the mountain. Yeah, it's kind of like you know, we're yeah. as we're climbing, we're hitting a few yeah. areas where we don't know where to put our foot, and that is figure okay. it out. Okay, keep going. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly, and then and then make a mental note of that, yeah. so that the next time you come across that yeah. very same problem, you already have a solution for it. That's right. Yep. Yeah, our motto is you, you don't make the same mistake twice. Yeah, you know, and we stick to that. Yep. You know, we and that's what we we talk to our other executives about is you know when we feel like we can help them with an issue that they ran into where there may have been a mistake made, we talk about it, we nail it, we say, all right, what system will we put in place sure. so that we won't make that mistake yep. again. That's awesome. Yeah. Guys, it's really been yeah, thank you. a wonderful time sitting with you and discussing. Yeah, thank yeah. you guys Thanks so much. Thanks for having us. The whole spectrum really of this yeah. is fantastic. Yeah. yeah, and we're excited to work with you guys. Yeah, we're happy to do it again. Yeah, absolutely. Stacey and I will keep in touch. Absolutely. She's yeah. already got us quoting out some stuff. We're I excited. Love it. We love, love it. it. We, yeah. we really, like that day that we came um, to Littleton and Bill Rucka, we walked out of there and we were like, if we could work there, like, yeah. just hanging out. Like you guys are yeah. awesome. Thank like, you. Every single person we met there was happy. Yeah. And you could tell was a hard worker yeah. and wanted to be there. And you know, it was, it was awesome for us to see. You, yeah. you can't pay people for that. You know, no. it's either in their blood or it's not. No. And it, it has to be in your blood yeah. in order for it to be in theirs. Yeah. It starts from the top down. I mean, we, we all, you know, really, truly enjoy what we're doing yeah. and we treat everybody with respect and we understand that everybody has a life outside of work and we try to accommodate that as much as possible, much more so than maybe a corporate, uh, a corporation. Yep. Um, so, you know, and, and, you know, we, like I said, we, we enjoy what we're doing. Justin and I enjoy these types of formats. Yep. Yeah. We love to share. Uh, we feel like we have a lot of knowledge now. We've built up a lot of knowledge. Sounds like it. Yeah. And, Sounds um, like it. you know, we're excited to share it with people. So, yeah. Uh, you know, motivate people to come into the stores and, and we're just another retail, you know what I mean? But we're going to, we're going to, you know, cause them to, to smile on their way out sure. and, yeah. uh, you know, yeah, hopefully I, they'll enjoy themselves. A lot of your values are the same of, as ours. Like a, a lot of yeah. things that you've said, yeah. you have I'm, said. I'm, <laughs> yeah. That's it's the thing. Like like I, really I've seen you bob in your head. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I know, Very I know. similar. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, morals and values. Yeah. And and that's what this podcast is all about cool. is um, you know, everyone has a story and you guys definitely do. Yeah. And um that's what we're trying to do is is get those stories out. Yeah. So awesome. so people know definitely. know you and Yeah. Yeah, this was a good one. Awesome. Was a good one. Yeah. Well, we're excited to do more, so awesome. thank you. Thanks yeah. guys. Absolutely. Thank right. you.